What's going on guys? Brian Thompson here with Lifetime Radon Solutions. What I want to go over here are just some basics when we pull up to a home. Andrew and I just pulled up here and um, if you look at the home behind me, what we want to look at when we're deciding uh, what kind of a radon system we're going to put in the home are a few things on the exterior of the home as we pull up that just give us a good idea of where we want to start. So if you look behind me here, what you'll notice is there's some cedar shake um, by the roof here. And cedar shake's gonna be a lot more difficult to be able to go through the roof and do a roof penetration um, to vent out of the roof. So we may wanna avoid that. And another thing that I noticed is it looks like there may be a partial living space above the garage that you might be able to see up there. And so what we wanna do is look into that a little more once we get into the home. And that's gonna help determine what kind of a system. Are we gonna install a garage style system or are we gonna install an exterior system? And those are two factors that may play into it. So as we go throughout the video here, you guys will be able to take a look at what we decide on. Thanks. Hey guys, what's going on? Brian Thompson here with Lifetime Radon Solutions. Um, I'm here with TJ, and what we're doing is we are swapping out the pump for this radon system. We're actually gonna be running this one right out of the sump crock. Uh, we kind of made some determinations when we pulled up and did the bid. Uh, you heard us talk about probably not going through the cedar shake. You also heard us talk about a little bit of living space coming over the garage. So that's why we avoided doing an interior system. We spoke with the homeowners and what we're going to end up doing is an exterior system here. Um, anytime we do a system, we have to put a submersible sump pump in. This helps protect against backdrafting um, so you don't get carbon monoxide back into the living space, which can of course make you very sick um, and potentially even be deadly. So we want to try to avoid that. But also, this is going to help the system to be the most effective. And when I say effective, it's going to help us create the best vacuum underneath the slab of the home. If we didn't have a submersible pump here, we wouldn't be able to seal the sump crack completely. And having even a small amount of airflow coming through from the living space in there can be very similar to like if you're drinking soda through a straw and that straw's got a hole in it, you're trying to pull water through or you're trying to pull sodas through and no moisture, no liquids coming through, you close up that little hole in the straw and bam, all of a sudden, all of the water, all the sodas coming through. Same kind of a concept. We want to create that vacuum underneath the slab. So TJ has been um, installing here what's called a submersible sump pump. Uh, we've just pulled out the old pedestal style sump pump. And really the difference is the submersible, you can see this motor here, it's going to stick below um, the top of the crock. And what that does is it allows us to put a cover over the top where there's no motor sticking out of the top um, of the structure. And if there was a motor sticking out of the top, what would happen is that float would go up and down. That float could potentially get caught on the cover and it could cause some kind of flooding, um, potential hazardous things in the home. So again, we want to do it for um, not flooding the home. We also want to do it for the best vacuum. Um, that we can get for the structure. And then the second, or the third reason rather, is we wanna make sure that we do not flood and that we uh, protect the integrity of a finished basement. Um, so one of the things that I saw TJ do here is you probably can't see it from the camera um, angle, but right here, there's actually a very small hole that he drilled into this pipe. And what that does is just ensures that that pump doesn't lock up. It just helps relieve a little bit of pressure, and that's really, really important anytime that you're installing a sump pump that you put one of those in. So I hope this has been informational. I hope this has been helpful. Um, keep an eye out for the rest of the videos and the rest of the things we've got going on. And uh, if you guys ever have any questions or concerns, do not hesitate to call or email us. Thank you very much. All right, cool. So you guys saw a little bit of TJ building this sump pump. Um, to place in here. As you can see, the motor of the sump is down in the bottom of the basin. And what's nice is you can also see there's some drain tile piping coming in. We know by code, this is a newer home, that the footing is going to stick out about nine and a half, about nine inches or so from the wall. So this drain tile piping that you see coming in is going to wrap all the way around the entire footprint of the structure at about nine and a half to 12 inches. So many times when we're talking with people on the phone, one of the biggest questions we get is, I heard you have to go out of my sump crock. You know, I want to go through my garage or I want to go to the back of my house, but my sump's in the front. 
it's not an issue because the only reason we're using the sump crock itself is to pull air through this drain tile piping which goes all the way around the footprint of your basement. So we know that we can measure anywhere between nine and a half and 12 inches from the wall, really at any point in the unfinished part of the basement. And we can find that drain tile, seal off the sump crock, and we can pull air through that effectively, ultimately drawing the radon out from the soil. Drain tile piping is perforated piping. So what that means is there's little holes in there and that allows water to get into the pipe to of course bring it to the crock so the pump can pump it out. Um, those little holes also serve a nice purpose for us to be able to pull air through that piping and again ultimately draw air from the soil and pull those soil gases out. system, four inch system with a legend fan. Piping goes all the way up above the roof line in accordance to EPA regulations. Fan is hardwired to a switch by a master electrician. Job well done by TJ. So we have the system finished here in the basement. As you can see we have the sump crock sealed up with a clear Luxon cover. Uh, we have it clear so you can still see into your sump crock when you have the system installed to see if it's, everything's running properly. Also that white piece there that um, is an access port, you'll be able to unscrew that if you need to reach your hand in there to do some you know, minor maintenance on the sump pump. Over here on the pipe is the U-tube. So what that shows when the fan is hooked up, that will show that airflow is still moving through the pipe. Uh, it'll show you how much you know, it's taking to, to get the airflow through that pipe as well as um, the sticker on the side that shows our name, our contact information, when the system was installed, as well as the initial pressure on the YouTube uh, when we had the system running. So as we come back here, as you can see it runs up the wall and through the joist there. Um, that's where the system well, was supposed to run. This is where the homeowner wanted it on the exterior of their house. So we ran it right out of the sump crack, up through, up, uh, through the joist and to the exterior of the home. Thank <laughs> you.